you hear me? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wa sayyid al-mursaleen wa khatam al-nabiyeen. الحبيب المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وصحابته الكرام المنتجبين In the name of God the compassionate, the merciful All the praise, to be, uh, all the praise be to God And may all the peace and blessings be upon all the Prophet Especially Prophet Muhammad and upon his purified progeny And the believers of his companions and may all the peace and blessings upon all of you brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We continue with our Quran study. We will study tonight uh, verse 58 and 59. And then I, I'd like to uh, seek your permission to answer a question that was sent to me by email last night. I think is a, is a very important question. Uh, we mentioned it briefly during uh, yesterday discussion today uh, because this question was raised. I will give a little bit more time to answer this question. So maybe today we will go over the 30 minutes by maybe five or 10 minutes. All right, I will start reading the verse in Arabic and then Muhammad Rada will translate it into English. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم والذين هاجروا في سبيل الله ثم قتلوا أو ماتوا ليرزقنهم الله رزقا حسنا وأن الله له خير الرازقين وإن الله له خير الرازقين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم And for those who migrated in the cause of God then were slain or died God will provide them generous provision. Truly, God is the best provider. Please recall the brothers and sisters, those who have been with us in previous sessions, recall verse 39 in this chapter. We talked about this in detail. When God gave permission for Muslims to use force in self defense hopefully you remember the details and the, the verse said permission has been given to those who have been fought against those who have been attacked for injustice causes to defend themselves this is what the permission and we've talked about this in details then the verse after that, verse 40, in the same chapter, chapter Al-Hajj, gives us example how some groups could be victims of injustice. And the example is that those who are forced to leave, to leave their homeland, those who were forced to to leave in their hometowns and homeland for what? Because, because of their faith. Because they said God is our Lord. They rejected idols, they worshiped God. So this verse now is saying that for those who migrated in the path of God, those who migrated in the path of God, and then they meet, uh, they, they, come, uh, they, they uh, get killed, or they die. God has a, a generous provision for them, uh, for God is the best of the providers. Uh, please let us discuss uh, every sentence of this verse step by step. First, it says, Alladina Hajaru, those who migrated. In the Quran, we come across uh, a language stru a structure that is, uh, uh, many times, in many verses, uh, uh, the language of the Quran is in the past tense. Past tense. So, 
uh, it talks about something happened in the past. Alladina uh, Hajaru, this is an example, those who migrated. Alladina Sadaqu Ma'ahadullah Alayhi, those who were honest in their covenant with God. Alladina Amanu, those who believed this, and, and there are hundreds of other examples. The language is in the past tense. So the question is, is this verse or similar verses that talks about the past uh, limited to the past, restricted, restricted to the past, or do they apply to the future? The answer is they apply to the, to the future as well. Something that happened in the past, uh, it might apply to the future. For, so for this example, uh, in most cases, unless there is an exception. In this example, those who migrated, those who are today are migrating, and those who will be migrating in the future, in the, in the cause of God, in the path or in the cause of God. What does this mean, in the cause of God? Uh, of course, the clear meaning of this and in the, in the cause or in the path of God is that somebody either, uh, uh, you know, forced to leave his or her hometown, homeland, because they are uh, persecuted uh, for their faith. So out of uh, their fear for their life, and to, to protect their identity and faith, they themselves choose to leave their homeland to protect their identity. This is exactly what happened with Muslims uh, uh, in Mecca, early Muslims in Mecca. Meccans did not force them per se to leave their homeland. They escaped, they left, <coughs> because they wanted to protect their faith and their identity. So it is an indirect way of forcing people to leave. Or basically forcing them, like telling them you have to leave, otherwise you'll be killed or you'll be tortured or in prison. That's another form. So this is one clear way uh, of uh, migrating in the cause of God. The other way is that somebody who, who, who migrated, who migrates to uh, teach about the religion of Islam, educate himself or others about the, the, the faith of Islam, whether it is for uh, those who are already Muslims or those who are uh, the general population. And the purpose is to educate uh, himself or herself or others about the faith of Islam. So these are the two clear meanings of fi sabirillah. The question is, how about other purposes? Somebody uh, migrate for other purposes. Let's discuss that is, and see if some of other purposes, whether they are included in cause of God or not. I'd like to share with you a story that happened at the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Uh, it seems that he was with his own companions, and uh, a young, uh, a very, uh, a young man who seems to be very energetic, very strong and energetic, passed by. So the companions saw that young man. And they turned to the Prophet and said in Arabic, لَوْ كَانَ هَذَا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ uh, in, uh, in the translation of this would be, wouldn't this be good if this man was serving in the cause of God, uh, you know, using his muscles, his energy, his strength, uh, in the cause of God. Apparently, they are referring to uh, 
this man using his strength in defending the Muslim community or the faith of Islam when there is an attack happens on Muslims. So he goes and uses his strength in a military way to defend the Muslim community. Listen to what the Prophet, peace be upon him, responded to this statement. He said, "In Kana Faraja Yasa Ala Wuldihi Salaran Fahwa Fi Sabir Allah." If this young man left home seeking a job to earn an income, and with this income he would support his children, his young children, this is in the cause of God. This is in the path of God. Also, he said, وَإِن كَانَ يَسْعَى وَإِن كَانَ خَرَجَ يَسْعَى عَلَىٰ أَبَوَيْنِ شَيْخَيْنِ كَبِيرَيْنِ فَهُوَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ If he has left home <coughs> seeking a job, seeking to work and earn an income to support his old parents. Again, this is in the path of God. And he also said, وَإِنْ كَانَ يَسْعَى عَلَىٰ نَفْسِهِ يَعْفُهَا فَهُوَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ If he has left home to work and seek, seek an income to support him himself, forget about parents and children, to support himself, يَعْفُهَا So he would not ask people for money or for support. He would not become a burden on others. Come and support me. He, work, he works to support himself. This is in the path of God. So see at this very broad de uh, definition that, God that, that the prophet has mentioned about the, the path of God, the cause of God. It's not limited to uh, the previous uh, clear meaning of that. So brothers and sisters, if anyone ha have migrated in the past or will migrate in the future for any of the reasons the, the prophet peace be upon him has mentioned, it is in the path of God. If you brothers and sisters, any one of you who migrated to uh, support his or her family, parents, or themselves, it is in the path of God. God will reward you in this life and consider you as uh, migrants in the path of God. Aren't you proud, brothers and sisters, how in, in the faith of Islam, our faith holds high an honor and also an honor um, um, immigrants and migration in general, uh, give them the due respect and honor, uh, uh, you know, because they migrated. We know people migrate to, to save their lives or to search for economic uh, opportunities. They are something that God would uh, encourage and would reward uh, for that. In opposite to those who migrate uh, for, the paper, for the purpose of uh, a selfishness, for the purpose of hurting somebody or creating mischief or violence uh, and, uh, and hurt uh, other people or the environment. So this is the meaning of, the broad meaning of fi sabilillah. Then God says, those who, those who uh, in this path, they encounter death, whether being killed or they die of natural causes. Eventually, all humans will die. All humans will die, including immigrants, they will die. Or if they have been killed, uh, if they face unfortunate uh, cause of death with, through through uh, being killed. God will 
provide them with a very generous provision. We will talk about the nature of this provision later. With very generous provision for them in the hereafter in paradise, of course. And I believe also, I agree with the meaning presented in the, in the book, the, the interpretation of the Quran by Abdullah Yusuf Ali, the meaning of the Holy Quran, that says this generous provision includes uh, that, that God would also support uh, the family who are left behind, the loved one, the children, the spouse, the, the family who are left behind. Uh, of course, God will extend his risk, his risk, his sustenance and provision for them as well. I tend to agree with this concept because, you know, God's, God's generosity is not limited. There is no a specific a dollar a month for, for God's generosity, a limited budget, you know, that he cannot exceed in that. Today, governments and companies and people, they have a certain budget and they, they cannot go beyond that budget, not for God. God has an unlimited resources and he would give generously to, uh, to everyone. And, once, and when he promises to give generously, of course, he will give. So I tend to agree that the risk uh, and hasana, the generous provision that God said for those who die or kill, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, they will face uh, a generous provision, generosity of God in the hereafter, and their loved one who are left behind also, they will be blessed with the generous provisions of, of God. And then the verse concludes with, I'm sorry. God is surely and truly is the best providers. You see, God gives unconditionally. God does not condition his giving uh, with faith. Uh, so he gives to the believers or non-believers. For those who are practicing, for those who are not a practicing for those who do good deeds of course god has a promise to give them but also for those who sometimes uh do sins for everyone the the generosity of god is uh, open for everyone all right and then comes the next verse i read it in, in arabic لِيُدْخِلَهُمْ مُدْخَلًا يَرْضَوْنَهُ وَاللَّهُ وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَعَلِيمٌ حَلِيمٌ He will certainly admit them to a place they will be well pleased with. For God is all-knowing and most forbearing. So those migrants who migrated in the cause of God, and we defined this cause of God in the previous verse, a verse. Uh, another uh, beautiful part of the generous rewards and the provision of God that He would admit them, uh, and let them grant them admission in heaven in a place of their own choice. How how generous is this? A, a place of their own choice, a place they are pleased with. So they might say, you know what, we want to be in the same place of, uh, uh, of the prophet, peace be upon him. Uh, this, th this is the only place we would be pleased with. And God has a promise to keep them pleased. It's their own ch that's the, a place of their own choice. Uh, 
I don't think there is a generosity beyond this generosity. He will reward them in the way they will be pleased on, on the day of judgment. Imagine, imagine, somebody says, you know, I'll take you, I'll send you to a vacation of your own choice. You choose the place you want to go, uh, wherever you want to go on earth, and you choose the package, you choose the hotel, you choose this, I'll sponsor you, I'll support you, I'll pay for that a trip. Isn't this very generous? Very generous. I don't think uh, you know anyone can offer such a, uh, give the, such offer to anyone because it could be unlimited, but not for God. God is the most generous and for those who migrate in the path of God, God tells them, what does pleases you? What does it please you? Uh, whatever please you, you, you will be granted. This is, the, of course, the, this only comes from the source of all generosity, Almighty God. For sure, God is all-knowing all for, and most forbearing. God knows the intent of people, and he is most uh, generous and most for bearing. Well, I'd like to end the discussion here because now we have spent about 22, hour, 22 minutes or 23 minutes. And I'd like to answer a question that was sent to me by an email last night. And I think it, it, it is uh, related to, to our discussion, especially yesterday discussion about the free will. This, the, the, the question says something like that. How does God's will play a role in people's free will? How can we understand the concept of the divine de decree, which is Qadr in Arabic, and a, human, a human's free will? So I'd like, this, actually, this question needs uh, many sessions, and it is really detailed one. We can talk for hours, and maybe after Ramadan, uh, hopefully this pandemic ends, but if it continues, uh, we, we will have sessions about certain topics, especially regarding theology. <laughs> Anything that related to God is, is called theology, about his attributes or his actions. So the question is, God decreed something for us, <clears throat> and we believe we have a free choice, we have a freedom to choose. How can we manage between these two? How can we understand this? It seems there is con contradiction this, between these two. So first of all, let us <clears throat> see whether humans are predestined or they, are, uh, they have a free choices. In the faith of Islam, <clears throat> most scholars agree on the concept that we humans, human beings, have no choice in certain aspects of their life. So they are predestined in certain aspects of their life, such as uh, the date of <clears throat> their birth. Nobody asks us uh, on what date you want to be born the place we are born in, the color of our skin, uh, our gender. Nobody <clears throat> asks us, did anybody ask you what gender you want to cho choose? Nobody did. Today, there are people <clears throat> who, at, uh, when they come, uh, become adults, they might decide to change their gender through surgery and, uh, uh, you know, uh, treatments. <clears throat> but nobody in the first place uh, asks us about our gender. Now, uh, these <clears throat> things are beyond our control. Either somebody else, other humans, our parents, somebody else has made a choice that impacted us, or God. God has made a choice that uh, made a decision that <clears throat> impacted us. So there are certain things beyond our control. We have absolutely no say about it. 
for these things, and this is what is important, brothers and sisters, for things beyond our control on the day of judgment, in this life and, and also on the day of judgment, no question asked. And because there is no question asked, no rewards and also no uh, punishment, no penalties. Nobody will uh, punish me or you because of our gender, because you know this is this is not a, a wrongdoing in the first place, and uh, it is beyond our control. We didn't have a say in it. <clears throat> so that's number two. There are, I'm sorry, number one. Number two. There are certain parts of our life, areas of our life, that we have freedom to choose. Example, you have decided today to join uh, the Quran study session. Did anybody force you to join it? Hopefully not. Hopefully uh, you decided to join by your free will. You had options, we know. You had options. Now, maybe 10 to 15 people have, have joined our discussion, uh, our, but there are tens of others they decided not to join. You decided to join. You had options. You could have uh, you know, went uh, to a grocery st a store to shop for your iftar today, for your dinner today. <clears throat> you could have spent your time watching Netflix or TV or the news or reading a book or listening to music or, or, or doing variety or sleeping, doing hundreds of other things. You had many options, but you decided to join this Quran uh, study session. On the day of judgment, God will ask you about this and say on May 7th, between 6 and 6.30 or 6.45, uh, May 7, 2020, between this time, what you were doing? You will say, I joined the Quran session. And because we believe this is what uh, pleases God, because you are reading and you are studying His revelation, hopefully we will be rewarded, inshallah. But for those who decide to, instead of joining a Quran session, go hurt somebody, go steal, go do something, consume alcohol, do something that does not please God. God will ask them. And there is a possibility that they will be uh, either forgiven or punished. <clears throat> God knows. So the bottom line, brothers and sisters, for things that is not in our control, no question asked, no rewards, no punishment, unless there is a consequence on that that is impacting us, that makes us earn a reward. For example, a young boy or girl uh, uh, born with disabilities, these disabilities are creating uh, pain. So that was beyond his or her control. But because it is ca causing pain for them, for that pain, of course, we believe God will reward them. God will give them reward because this is something going beyond their control. This is not, the, that wasn't their choice. Now, uh, so, so far we know what people will be uh, rewarded for or what they will be punished for. Now, the question is, when you decided to come to this Quran session, go somewhere uh, in heaven that you will attend Quran study a group on Zoom on May 7th, 2020, between six to 6 p.m. to 6.30 or 6.45 p.m. God has written this. But yet we know it is your, it was your own 
choice. Nobody forced you to come. How can we uh, uh, bring conciliation between these two concepts? Well, let me give you an example so we can make this uh, uh, concept close to understanding. As we fast during this holy month, may Allah accept your fasting. Uh, your spouse or your mother or the, the female or, or your father or my, whoever uh, in the family goes to shopping to prepare for iftar for the breaking the fast tonight. Goes to a grocery store and he, the mother, for example, let's take the, the uh, mother because they are the best in this and, and they really go through a lot of hardship and though a lot of fathers also do the same. She goes to the grocery store and she goes to the sea food section. She, there are tens of different kinds of fish there. For example, there is uh, tilapia, there is cod, there is salmon, there is uh, halibut, uh, there is a trout, and you name it. There is a long list of all different kind of uh, uh, fish. But she actually buy one pound of tilapia and one pound of, uh, uh, let's say, salmon. Bring it home and prepare the food. For the tilapia, she uh, cook it, uh, uh, steam cooking with the steam. And she uses a lot of uh, some spices for that. For the salmon, she grilled it very well with a lot of uh, other spices. And she bring it on the table for iftar and prepare the iftar for them to break the food. You ask her, what happened? Why you choose salmon and tilapia? You did not choose others. And why you steam cook the tilapia? Why you grilled the salmon? She says, huh? My husband and my son, they like salmon, they don't like other fish, and they like it to grill very well, grilled very well with this kind of spices. However, my daughter and I, we like tilapia cooked, uh, you know, steam cooked. And this is how uh, I prepared the iftar for tonight. Lucia uh, John. Uh, the, the, in the Pharisee, they say. So, sahtain uh, in Arabic, they say. <laughs> so, the question is, did this mother really force her husband, her son and daughter, to eat what uh, she prepared? That's the really the question. The answer is no. She did not force them. She knew what they like. She exactly knew what kind of food they like and how to cook that food. Because, you know, her, there are her kids and her, she, she spent raising their kids. They know what they like. And she spent uh, decades with her husband. She also, with her husband, she know what, what he likes and what he does not like. So knowing, in fact, is no way forcing or taking the freedom of choice from others. Mothers, uh, teachers, others know of uh, uh, others, and because they know of others, they prepare something, but this does not mean that they force them. And I can give a variety of examples. Unfortunately, we don't have time. Uh, same with uh, God. Same with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Knowing what is happening to us in the future. You know, the knowledge of the future belongs to God. The knowledge of the uh, uh, future belongs to a discipline of what we call ilmul ghayb. The knowledge of the unseen. Unseen. One discipline of the unseen is knowing about the future. And God knows about us. 
God knows about us more than what we know about ourselves. But for him, knowing about what we are going to do in the future or what is going to happen in the future, it does not mean that he is somehow imposing or interfering with our own free will. He knows what kind of choices we are going to make. Another example, your mother prepare a breakfast for you. There is egg, there is cereal, there is uh, fruit, but she knows that you, uh, her, her child is going to choose the cereal with a variety of options over the table. She knows that he or she is going to pick the cereal. Does this mean she is imposing? No. That's, that's her knowledge. Based on her information and data, she knows what, is, what kind of response or reaction of her own child. This might happen to you while you are watching a, a movie. Uh, for example, you know an author called Agatha Christie, and many of her stories have, ten, have turned into movies. When you watch a movie, you basically know how the scenario is going to go on and on and on. And then at the end, how the per perpetrator will be uh, 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 chosen or, or get to be known. You basically, because of your previous knowledge, you know how this is going. So bottom line, brothers and sisters, God knowledge, because he has created us. He knows our uh, emotions. He knows when we are wired, you know, and he knows uh, how we are going to react. If you create a, com a computer, uh, something, a, a robot, you have given this robot the instruction. You know, in and out of this device, of course, you know when, this will ha when, when an incident happened, how this robot is going to react. All right? So, the difference is with the robot there are no choices and the robot knows this situation and knows how to respond to this so there is only one solution god has given us variety of options and he knows how we are going to respond to these uh, to different conditions so with this i come to answer this question and conclude our session. It took a little bit longer, 40, uh, almost 40 minutes today. If there is any other question, please raise it or comment if you like to add, and you can send me a message later so we can discuss this. Before I conclude uh, with dua, I'll wait for your questions or comment. Tomorrow, our session will be about celebrating the birth date of Imam Hassan, the grandson, the beloved the grandson of uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa alayhi wa sallam. Uh, and then we'll continue for a few nights until we uh, reach the nights of uh, power, inshallah, night of Qadr. All right, time for uh, questions if you have. All right, if uh, there is no question, I'd like to uh, conclude with uh, uh, reciting the opening chapter of the Quran and Fatiha for the healing of all those who are ill and sick, for the, pro for the protection of everyone, protection for you from this uh, disease, uh, and for the protection of everyone, including those who are in the front line fi fighting against this COVID, uh, our health professionals in our community and outside our community, and for the pleasure of the soul of Mu'minin and Mu'minat. Before I recite the Fatiha, is there any question? Uh, did I see a, a, a hand was raised? All right, let us recite Fatiha for the healing of all those who are ill and sick for your protection and for the pleasure of the soul of those who departed us. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. 
مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين صلوات اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد صل على محمد وعلى محمد Thank you Thank very you, much. God bless Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank 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 you.